Today we're talking about how to present your science better. We're talking script, sound, style. Hey, how's it going? It's Ken Dutton Register here, and today we're talking about how to present your science better with script, sound, and style. Now, communicating science is a bit of a challenge. Science is one of those things that can be very complex, and you can quickly turn an audience to sleep. I know I've done it. I've seen people snoring in my <laughs> seminars before. Um, but with these few strategies, hopefully you can implement them in a way that you capture your audience better and make them talk about how they loved hearing what your science is about. So why become a better science presenter? Well, I think there's a lot of benefits to it. Firstly, um, people are more likely going to remember what you actually presented. <laughs> They're going to look at what research that you're doing and what you're doing in the future. You're going to get more invites to give more talks, and this is really important. I think particularly on your academic track record, if you're being invited to give talks, um, that looks really good. And I've found in my own personal experience, I've given some talks. Um, there's only been maybe like 10 or 15 people in the crowd, but there was one person in there who was organizing a conference, and they specifically asked me afterwards to talk at that conference just because I gave such a compelling and great scientific talk. Don't underestimate the power of becoming a better communicator. Now, communicating science is a bit of a challenge because you're dealing with such complex topics, and it's very easy to quickly go down that rabbit hole of talking too complicated, um, pitching it at the wrong audience, so talking over their heads or talking under their heads. So the first thing I think you really need to think about is the audience. So you need to assess who am I talking to? Am I talking to the community or other scientists? And if I'm talking to scientists, are they in my field or outside my field? Now, I think probably the best way to do it is actually, even if they are scientists, is to start very basic and then slowly ramp up your complexity throughout the talk. You want to try and keep people as engaged in your talk for as long as possible. Another thing is you really want to make sure you segment your talks in a way that people can tune in. If you have a talk that is consistently flowing on from one thing to another, that if you miss that one piece of information and you, if you don't have that piece of information, the rest of the talk doesn't make sense, um, basically you're going to get people whose minds drift. It's going to happen regardless, even if you are the most best scientific presenter in the world. Um, but you're going to get that drift off, and once you do, if they can't come back into it, um, they're just going to like tune off and start typing those emails, checking their phone, or thinking about what they're going to eat as soon as they get out of the seminar. So today's talk is about style, sound, script. Style, sound, script is a bit of a, a, bit of a tongue twister, actually. <laughs> so style. The first tip is to film yourself. Now, this sounds pretty horrible. Um, a lot of people don't like this. <laughs> but it's the only way to see what your style of presentation is. So what I would recommend next time that you give a scientific presentation, um, set up a camera, um, get one of your friends to just record on their mobile phone, and get them to record your whole talk. It doesn't even have to be the whole talk. It can be like the first five minutes. So people can tend to do um, different things with their body that they're not aware that they're doing, and it comes across really weird. So I've seen people um, who um, tend to do this all the time. I mean, I do move my hands quite a lot, but um, this becomes really distracting if you're constantly doing this. Um, so sometimes I've seen people who have done that or done other weird gestures that they don't realize they're doing. They've seen themselves on camera and they're like, oh my god, I look like a weirdo doing that. And being aware of it is the best way to then, for the next talk, not do it. Um, it could also be that you're stamping your foot um, and while it's doing it once or twice isn't too bad, if you're constantly doing it, it actually begins to detract from your actual the words that you're trying to say. Um, it could be some other ticks, it could be how you're Sit, standing or sitting, um, people who tend to like, you know, chill like this it, it may not look as professional, um, or maybe people are, are really trying to hide behind a lectern, and you know, they're sort of not portraying confidence. So, recording yourself and seeing how you look on camera is really important because you can really change the way that you present, 
and be more aware of it so the next time you give a talk, you'll look more confident and um, you'll probably feel more confident as well because you know you look good. As painful as it is, do it. Um, and I would also suggest getting the audio on there as well. Um, here, the audio is important because you'll begin to know if you're doing certain ticks or you're repeating things a little bit too much. So I know for me, I get into a habit of repeating a certain word. Um, often for me, it's like essentially or basically. I used to have someone in the lab who knew I did this and she would write down how many times I said that word during a scientific presentation and she would have very much happiness afterwards running up and saying, you said basically 10 times. And I'm like, okay, I know not to do that for the next one. I've gotten better at it, but over time, you might get a new word that you don't realize that you're doing. So even if you're very experienced in presenting, I would recommend filming yourself periodically, just checking to see if there's something that you're doing that you're not aware of that's crept into your, into your, into your habit or behaviors, because um, you can always do better to communicate science more effectively. So that was style. Next one, script. It's really easy to confuse people with jargon and really complicated science words, um, even if they're within their field. So I know I've been to talks with people in my field and I've still been confused with all the G names and acronyms. Um, everyone uses a different type of acronym um, and it can get quickly overwhelming. So my advice here is to check out this new platform and new business called Verbalize Science. Uh, now, these guys are based out in Adelaide. They're doing really great stuff, and they have this really great platform to help you improve your script. Um, so as a researcher, you can go to it. You can use the platform for free, and it's got this really great AI um, program that you can type your script in, and it will have a look at it and say, you know what? That looks complicated. Why don't you try and rephrase it better? Um, maybe you've used an acronym, and it'll say, you know what? That's probably going to confuse people. Switch it out. You can also use it as a way to actually start building your script. It has these prompts on how to actually set out a talk in a way that makes people understand it. Um, so it has these little prompts and questions. You fill in the answer, it has the next one, fill in the answer, and it makes writing a script really, really easy. And this is really powerful if you're doing something that requires a very short time frame, such as a three-minute thesis, um, or you're talking to the public. Um, or if you're just trying to present your poster um, at a conference. Using this can be really powerful in, in really getting a nice, tight script that makes sense and won't confuse people. They've also got a bunch of other benefits, um, so you can actually record yourself an audio and then get a link for that, which you can actually put on your scientific posters. So if people don't want to just look at your poster, they can actually go to this um, and actually listen to you in a really short and concise way, usually about a minute, um, exactly what your research is, show is showing and why it's important. So that was script. Um, style, script, and sound. So the sound of your voice is really important. So um, you've probably gone to a talk before and you've, they could be the most amazing scientist and do the most amazing research but they have the most monotone voice that it just puts you to sleep. Um, sometimes science can be done really effectively and you'll stay in touch, but most of the time, nine out of 10 times, you're just gonna fall asleep with someone's voice who's just very flat, um, or maybe it's really slow, or maybe it's too fast. Maybe I'm talking too fast, who knows? But <laughs> um, you wanna try and get your voice in a way that engages people and not make them fall asleep, basically. <laughs> So one app that I found that's really useful is called Orai, or Orai. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, <laughs> but it's O-R-A-I, which I think is like oral and AI put together to make Orai. Um, this is an app you can download, and basically you, look, I'm saying basically already. <laughs> what you do is record yourself, uh, and this could be off a script or just on the fly, and it will actually give you a ranking as to how you present. So it'll actually give you a rank of like zero to 10 or something like that, and 10 being like, you know, TEDx amazing, zero being, yeah, you're gonna need to do some work. <laughs> and it actually gives you hints on how you can actually improve the sound of your voice. 
whether that's increasing your pitch, decreasing your speed, increasing your speed, putting in deliberate pauses. All of these different things can really make you sound really engaging and make people sucked in to want to hear what your science is about. So definitely check out those things. So record yourself, check out Verbalize Science, download ORAI, and hopefully between those three things, you'll be an amazing presenter in no time. Maybe not. <laughs> I actually recommend working on one thing at a time. So the next scientific presentation, pick one aspect that you want to improve. Have that in your forehead. Make sure you look at that before you go on stage and try and be aware of it as you go through that scientific presentation. Nail it. Next talk, focus on something else. And this is something that I do regularly. So hopefully that makes you more confident in presenting your science and gives you some tips to become a better science communicator. So let me know if you've got any other resources or tools that you think are really useful. Put them in the comments below. That will really act as a useful resource for anyone following up this video in the future. So with that, um, stick around. Um, I'll be presenting more videos on how to be a better scientist.